Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eric Segal, as you see. I'm a professor at the Royal Institute of Technology. And for a number of years, <coughs> I've been intrigued by light and, in fact, what is inside light. So, uh, I started to ask myself questions like, you know, why is this ambient lighting the same as we had 100 years ago? Maybe you changed the luminar, but other than this, your light in a kitchen, it's about the same it was 100 years ago. Could we use ICT? to make the light really very, very smart. And when I speak about smart, really understanding what we are doing here, understanding the perception of people, and so on. And could we, in fact, do something else? Could we connect the physical world and the digital world and have the light being the glue and uh, about 12 years ago, I started to uh, explore this field. And at the time, I was very much uh, interested also in a semantic web and semantic technologies. And that's how we came to this notion of semantic light. And what I would like to do tell you is what is the semantic light? What is the internet of light? How we could think about another type of light, which we call the structured light, and how we connect the physical and digital world. And at least I want to show you one application, and this is in the future of all of us, the notion of connecting the retail, the physical retail with the digital retail. So, <coughs> imagine that you have a fairly uh, sophisticated bulb, which have a number of sensors, a number of different types of luminar, some kind of a computer connecting to the cloud, and we put a picture on this table. The lamp is recognizing the picture, the physical picture is bringing now from the web, from the cloud, uh, associated information. If I move the picture, the physical picture around, the uh, light is going to dynamically follow the light, follow the, uh, the picture, uh, the intensity, the color uh, of the light will be adapted to my personal eyes. And this is basically what we consider to be semantic light. It's light which has a human perception model. It's aware of the environment which we are on, and it's also aware of the task we are doing. So, with this in mind, if we could do that, we could associate to a physical object some digital information, and we, got, we get to the notion of an internet of light, which is different from the Internet of Things, which most of you, I'm sure, knows about it, where we take objects and we add intelligence by adding sensors and, uh, and computation and connectivity. In this case, we have a very inexpensive type of Internet of, of Things, where illumination add, adds connected intelligence to regular objects. So here it's uh, 
an example. So if you put a map on this table under the lamp, under semantic lamp, which I show you in the first view uh, graph, and Zeri, myself, it's in front of this table, and the uh, system know that I'm completely dyslexic with respect to putting the map back, folding back the map, it will say, okay, perhaps you want to fold the map. And this is the first fold. Once I fold it, it's recognizing that I did the first fold, it's doing the second fold and third fold and so on, until the map is folded. Uh, this is meaning that we understand the object, we connect task-related information to this, we connect human-related information to this. So let me give you uh, another example. <laughs> the tea making. Why it's interesting to do a tea? Well, in uh, a number of countries, including England, uh, being able to make a tea qualify an elderly person to live independently. This is actually the test which the physician would do. So being able to assist a person to do a tea may mean that this person could live independently longer. Time. And now is the time to introduce to you the structured lighting. What is structured lighting? This is ambient light, okay? If you have a spotlight on this uh, 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 piece of paper, then we will light only this piece of paper. But assume that I have a 3D object, and the light is able to recognize this object and envelope this object dynamically with light. So when I move this object, doesn't matter in which way, the light is able to follow this, but also form around this object. We call this structure light. This, on this table, the lamp recognizes objects and generates structured light around each of those objects. And this is a way we communicate with the user uh, of this system. So if I put some tea on the table, the system is saying, well, maybe you want to do a tea. This is the recipe for tea. Uh, once I boil the water and I put water, the system is recognizing that there is water, that it's changing the color of the object, it's taking the temperature, uh, it's moving to a next phase of making tea. Uh, you'll wait till you are 97 degrees. Uh, then you put the tea in. The tea will brew for some time. Uh, and when it's ready, again, we will communicate to structure lighting with the user. Once I put the tea in, uh, there are a number of, of temperature. The person might like the tea. Uh, once I touch the right tem temperature, then the system remember it's going to wait till the tea is getting to the right temperature, and of <laughs> course, we'll enjoy the tea. <laughs> we have built such lamps, and what I want to show you is uh, a video which we made in an apartment in Stockholm where we put the lamp with a family. Uh, and it's kind of interesting what they decide to do with this, with this lamp.
Okay. <laughs> so maybe you'll find one of those lamps at the IKEA <laughs> in the next couple of years. So what are the application of those type of things? Structure light. Uh, here again, it's work with IKEA. Uh, the system has descriptions of the type of uh, plates and glasses which IKEA is selling. And it's recognizing them and could set tables in different ways. So these are the same setting. This is for morning and this is for dinner. There is nothing different but the light and it's all structured light. Uh, when you show the lamp uh, today newspaper in the morning, it will set up for the morning. When you show a bottle of wine, it will show up for the evening. Uh, so this is a context-aware structure lighting. More interesting, uh, and you have seen in the video in an apartment in Stockholm, that people are interacting with a uh, regular phone, with iPhones and Android phones, with the light. Meaning that I could uh, <coughs> use my phone to create light and structure light behavior. And this led to the notion that if I could recognize, this is a virtual thing, right? I could recognize each pair of uh, shoes here, or then I could connect those shoes with the digital image of the shoes or the online store. So this brought us to the notion of pointing, clicking, and connecting, meaning that I could use my phone to point to any object in my vicinity, and the light will generate a light uh, manifestation. In this case, could be a pointer, or could be any light manifestation. And I could connect with whatever information is about this object in a cloud. I could buy, share, and so on. So this led to the notion of connected retail, which is basically connecting the physical retail place with the online retail place. And let me show you one of the uh, uh, demonstration of this technology. So what's happening, that it's a poster, which is a 2D piece of paper. The system is recognizing each of the objects in a poster and is generating structured lighting, which is exactly the shape of this object in a 2D. And this pointer, it's uh, just a light manifestation. Once I click in any of those items, I go to the online store, I could buy, I could share, and so on. Of course, we could move to the 3D object, which again is structured lighting. choose whatever type of uh, coat I want.
white light, but more kind of type of lights. Uh, and social media and so on. I think that I will stop here by telling you that this is uh, a cooperation project with the uh, Technical University in Eindhoven, Philips, uh, Technical University of Tampere, and uh, the Royal Institute of Technology. And I will take questions at your pleasure.